Okay, so don't watch this video until you've watched the other one on context just now because that will help you understand some of these ideas a little bit more. Um, I've already kind of highlighted in here some of the main words and devices that I'm going to analyse, but I might be adding more to that as well as I go along. And also, first of all, I think it makes sense to kind of look at the title of the poem and the structure of the poem. So the first thing that you might want to talk about in your IOC is the actual title, which is Ancestral Photograph. So the title is made up of two words. It's worth kind of analysing both of them, obviously, but I think this word in particular, the first word in particular, gives some indication as to what the poem's about. So if we have a look at that, this gives us an idea of something that is kind of antiquated and he's going to be talking about something to do with his heritage here as well. Ancestral is a word that has connotations of something being something quite old, which is why I've kind of highlighted the fact that it might it suggest something antiquated rather than something recent. Um, and we know that Heaney is quite kind of backwards looking in terms of his poetry. So he's often talking about his heritage, where he's come from, his family, his background, the past and so on. Um, photograph, again, it gives us in terms of the image and focus of the poem. And this is the subject of the poem from start to finish. He focuses on, on that throughout. So, um, when I was talking to you earlier about how he focuses on things that are every day, in this case he's focusing on a photograph, um, which shows how he's kind of focusing on something that's to do with real life. Um, okay, in terms of structure, um, what you have here are five stanzas, obviously, um, but you've got five sestets. So don't forget what the, the type of stanzas they are. So sestets, if you're not sure, are six line stanzas. So we have some kind of regularity in terms of structure. We also do have, sorry I'm moving so much. We do have um, some regularity in terms of rhyme scheme as well. If you do a really quick look, it goes A, A, B, C, C, B, and it continues like that throughout the poem. So in terms of stanza length, so stanzaic structure and rhyme pattern, there is some regularity. However, in terms of punctuation, there is very little regularity at all. In fact, we have quite a lot of enjamb um, of caesura. And then in the middle stanza, you have what's essentially a stanza of just enjambment. Um, I'll talk about the reason why I think he uses that later. But it's just working at, worth pointing out that despite the kind of regular pattern, there is still some informality in terms of how Heaney presents his poem. I would surmise that that is possibly also to do with the fact that this poem's written in first person. And it does still sound kind of conversational in its tone. So it's not completely formal. Um, so we'll start with the first stanza. And actually, um, Heaney does something kind of convenient for us in this poem. Because each stanza quite neatly um, is about one topic. So this first stanza, if you had to kind of give that a title or explain what it was about. Um, it's about his um, great uncle and he's kind of describing how he looks. So the image of his great uncle in the um, old photograph. That's all it's about. Um, <laughs> the way in which he does this, however, is obviously what we're going to be analysing. Um, we don't know that it's his great uncle until we get to the second stanza where it says my father's uncle but that is who the um, photo 
um, has been taken off. So we'll look at this first stanza because there's a lot of visual imagery in there. Um, if we begin with the first line, um, Heaney begins right in the middle of describing this image. So he begins with the words, jaws puff round and solid as a turnip. Now we know just with our eyes closed that that is a simile, obviously. Um, but also we've got a lot of um, adjectives in here. So we have um, puff, we have round, solid. So we get this kind of image of the man that he's describing immediately. Um, it's not a particularly kind of pleasant image. I think that it's amusing that he uses this root vegetable here, partly just because, you know, he seems to be obsessed with root vegetables in all of his poetry. Um, but at the same time, what we also get an image of is a guy who's kind of like quite confident. And we see that later in the poem as well in terms of his behaviour. Um, but in terms of it being a positive, a negative image, sorry, not a positive image, we also see that starting to come through because he compares his eyes to those of statues. Now, that's actually a metaphor. It's not a simile there. But he does that because obviously we know that it's a still image. It's He's not describing a person in real life. Also, just worth noting as well, is the word statues isn't plural. It's a possessive pronoun with an apostrophe. So that suggests that the eyes look like they belong to statues. So it is like that is just reinforcing the idea of it being still and not something that's happening in like real life. It's not a, a moving image. Okay. The next, so the second line and the third line. We also get quite a harsh image of this man as well because we have the upper lip which bullies the heavy mouth down to a droop. So, sounds quite kind of pessimistic. But also, the image of the lip bullying the mouth. That kind of links to his behaviour later where we see him kind of speaking to the other men at the market and, and the kind of air of confidence and almost kind of like brashness and aggression that he has towards other people. Um, in the fourth, fifth and sixth line, um, we see Heaney talking about how he's dressed. So a bowler is his hat and um, the silver watch chain. Now, the reason that he might be focusing on this as well is partly because what I've highlighted here, the stage Irishman. So he's talking about how his uncle almost looks like a stereotype here. A stage Irishman being someone who looks like they're playing the part of an Irishman. So he looks very stere stereotypical. And um, the words scorn and, and deadpan as well Deadpan would actually normally use in terms of reference to humour, um, but it's, very, it's still very kind of like, it's um, delivered in a very kind of like serious and um, uncomical way. So we have quite a kind of severe image of him here in the beginning. Now, one of the reasons that Heaney might do that is partly, obviously, because it's an image that's like frozen in time, but also because he, as we see later, doesn't really, although he remembers these things about his father and his uncle, um, he, in his life and in his role and his job as a poet, he doesn't relate so much to this um, background that his uncle and his father have of herding cattle. And you see a very similar theme coming through in 
digging because he talks about how his role is more of a writer than someone who's involved um, in the agricultural field, literally. Um, so he's kind of, he's pondering these differences as well. The fact that he has this heritage and yet he's not really like these men. And he also is pondering the fact that times have kind of changed. It's not a poem, I have to admit, that I'm hugely fond of. Um, but just in terms of what he's kind of exploring overall, that might be worth mentioning.